welcome to section six of the course. And this is the sauciest section so far. We're going to be talking about shark sex. Or more professionally put, shark mating and reproduction. So first of all, let's look at mating and also physical characteristics of female and male sharks and rays. So the first characteristic that we can talk about is something that we've already mentioned in the anatomy section, and it is the best way to identify between males and females, and that is the presence of claspers. And these are the modified parts of the pelvic fin that are sort of rolled up extensions of the internal line of the pelvic fin. Now it's quite hard sometimes to tell these in sub-adult males as they're less developed and really quite small. However, if you see a big mature male, you'll definitely notice them. They are hard to miss. Now, some other sexual dimorphisms, which means a physical characteristic of just a male or a female, are sometimes less obvious, but still worth talking about. So the next sexual dimorphism we can talk about is one that you cannot see externally, and that is the thickness of the skin. Interestingly, females have a significantly thicker skin than males do. Now, this is actually to protect them from bad injury during mating due to the fact that the male sharks actually bite on to the females and can do quite a lot of damage to the females during mating. So females have this thicker skin in order to prevent any nasty injuries. And really interestingly, females have quite often been measured with skin that is just a tiny bit thicker than the length of the teeth of that species. So this shows that this is a characteristic to avoid any nasty injuries during mating as the skin is thick enough that However bad the male might bite down on the female, it's only ever going to be a superficial skin wound. Another sexual dimorphism, which can be more noticeable, is size. Now this only occurs in viviparous sharks or live birth sharks. And this is that females are often much larger than the males. And this is necessary for viviparous sharks as they need that extra space in their internal cavity in order to grow these young sharks to a decent size. But also being larger is beneficial for viviparous females because they need a lot of energy to provide the nutrition for their young as they grow. So being a bigger shark means there's more excess energy for the young. Now, if we go into more specifics, we can see that some rays and skates actually show sexual dimorphism in their teeth, where almost all rays and skates have flattened plate-like teeth in order to crush their prey, the males of some species have developed more cusped or more pointed teeth in their jaw in order to actually be able to hold on to the pelvic fin or dorsal fin or trunk of the female for mating. So these teeth still function well as feeding teeth because they're still plated, but with these extra cusps, it gives them better grip on the female for mating. Interestingly, the males actually lose these specialized cusped teeth after the mating season, and these are replaced with normal flattened plate-like teeth for the rest of the year until it comes back round to mating season again. Similarly, skates have also developed a sexual dimorphism, but actually in the dermal denticles on the ventral side of their body. They've developed longer, sharper dermal denticles, which basically help them to actually stick onto the females during mating. And these dermal denticles are also lost after the mating season. So all chondrichthians use internal fertilization, which means that the eggs stay inside the female and the sperm is inserted into the female to fertilize the eggs. Now this differs from almost all bony fish, which use external fertilization. So there are pros and cons of both methods. For internal fertilization, this means that the young are very well developed and large and therefore have a high chance of survival. And this is in comparison to the thousands or even millions of eggs released during external fertilization that then just drift on ocean currents and have to survive on their own from a microscopic size. Now this high chance of survival comes at a cost and that is an energy cost as it takes a lot of energy for the female to develop these large, well-developed young. So therefore the number of young is often very low. And even though numbers of shark offspring have been numbered in some species up to around 300, that is still a very low number if you compare it to the thousands or millions of eggs that are released for external fertilization. And remember, some shark species and ray species actually only give birth to one 
or maybe too young for each reproductive cycle. And also on top of this, due to this high energy demand, females regularly have to take at least one or sometimes two years off between reproductive cycles in order to recoup and recover from the pregnancy and also prepare for the next pregnancy and basically restore their energy levels. So now we get on to shark sex. Now only one of the male's claspers is ever actually inserted into the female at a time. So why have two claspers? Well, this is actually basically to give the shark options as during fertilization, the clasper will bend and sort of rotate and inflate at an angle off of the shark. Now, if they only had one clasper, that male shark would have to be on the left or the right hand side of the female in order to insert the clasper. So therefore, by having two claspers, it gives them the options that it doesn't matter what side they are on of the female, they will have a higher chance of getting the clasper into the female. Now, mating positions for sharks and rays vary quite a lot, but the vast majority of them, as I mentioned earlier, bite onto the pectoral fin or even onto the trunk of the body and swim almost side by side with the female in order to insert their claspers. Now, some sharks, like cat sharks, actually bite onto the dorsal fin and actually wrap their bodies around the female, almost like a rubber ring, in order to fertilize her. And then some sharks and rays, in fact, go belly to belly during fertilization. But either way, the main aim of this is always to insert the clasper into the female for fertilization. So once that clasper is inserted into the female, what they will do is they will inflate and splay, or basically unravel. Because remember, the clasper is just an extended part of the pelvic fin that is sort of a long rolled up section of cartilage. So they will open up and not only does this assist with releasing the sperm into the female, but this also helps hold the clasper into the female's cloacal opening during fertilization. So now that we know how sharks do the deed, we can look at what happens after mating. We can look at the incredibly varied ways that sharks actually develop their young and give birth to them, which is what we're gonna look at at the next lecture.